SCP-3034. The Counting Station. Item Number, SCP-3034. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Three Foundation personnel are to remain on site, with at least one employee monitoring radio frequencies for occurrences of SCP-3034. All personnel are to have at least C1 certifications in Russian. Radio equipment is to receive weekly diagnostic checks to ensure all devices are in working condition. Personnel are rotated off-site on a monthly basis. If, at any time, an occurrence of SCP-3034 is detected, personnel are to immediately respond on the same frequency with a message in Russian. Translation, all is well. In any instance where communication is lost with the site, MTF Epsilon 10, Santa's little helpers, will be mobilized to investigate and secure the area. Under no circumstances is on-site radio equipment to be used for any other purpose besides transmitting the phrase Translation, all is well. Under no circumstances should an attempt be made to communicate with SCP-3034, see attached incident report. Under no circumstances are children permitted on site. Description SCP-3034 is a reoccurring anomalous radio broadcast of unknown origin. As of this date, the transmission has only been observed within approximately 2 kilometers of provisional site 3034. All attempts to triangulate the source of SCP-3034 have failed. Since 1964, there have been over 627 occurrences of this broadcast. They occur at apparently random intervals, the shortest gap being 2 weeks, and the longest, 6 months. All occurrences of SCP-3034 follow the same format, a synthesized musical tone plays for approximately 10 seconds, followed by the voice of SCP-3034-A, estimated to be a female adolescent of Russian nationality. SCP-3034-A immediately begins to count backwards from 200 in Russian, update May 17, 2015, see attached incident report. If, during this countdown, provisional site 3034 broadcasts of all is well on the same frequency, SCP-3034-A immediately stops counting. The same tone from the beginning of the broadcast plays again, and the broadcast ends. A notable audio distortion occurs in the background of SCP-3034 as SCP-3034-A speaks. Attempts to analyze this distortion are ongoing, see attached audio analysis below. Testing has shown that SCP-3034 does not respond to recorded occurrences of all as well. It is for this reason that personnel must be present at Provisional Site 3034 at all times. Attachment 1, slash 3034 slash discovery slash debriefing dot log. Date, February 2nd, 1964. Recovery Lead, Commander Robert Malthus. Subject, SCP-3034. We were first made aware of a site by a defecting agent of GRUP. Although allegedly a Russian-aligned counting station, preliminary reports indicated a high probability of anomalous activity. I assembled a team consisting of myself, five of my men, and Agent Browning, selected for his proficiency in several Russian dialects. Once appropriate preparations were made, we set out to investigate. We found the site uninhabited. Evidence strongly suggests it was evacuated a week prior to our arrival. It contains several pieces of well-maintained radio equipment, a diesel generator, found running when we arrived, numerous partially burned records, and over 20 logbooks, all written in Russian. These books describe broadcasts received by the station. The oldest entry is dated to 1947. We also found two phrases carved into a desk. 
Agent Browning translated them from Russian. Do not let her finish. Tell her all is well. On the second day at approximately 0730 hours, an automated alarm sounded. We later determined this alarm is triggered by incoming broadcasts. Upon activating the radio speakers, we heard a young woman speaking in Russian. Agent Browning informed us that this woman was counting downward, and had reached 76. After a short debate, it was decided that the most prudent course of action would be to follow the instructions on the desk. Dr. Browning interrupted the broadcast with the provided phrase, all is well. The voice stopped. A tone played, and the broadcast ceased. I have left Agent Browning on site along with two of my men, they have sufficient fuel and rations to last for three weeks. My recommendation is for constant surveillance until the precise nature of this anomaly can be determined. Attachment 2 slash 3034 slash file slash interview dot log Audio log Note, the following audio was recovered from partially burned magnetic tapes discovered on site. All dialogue is translated from Russian. Begin log Let's get this over with. You attempted to steal state property, Sergei. How did you think this would end? She is not state property. She has a name. What was your intention? To defect to the Americans? Let them know about our little project? You know me. You know I have served with honor and distinction. You know I would never- Did they promise you money? Asylum? And what did you imagine would happen to her? Did you think you would raise her as your own? This is wrong. You know this is wrong. You are meddling in powers you can't possibly. And do you think the Americans understand what powers they meddle with? Do you think they have any inkling of what this atom bomb can do? I know that one does not make deals with atom bombs. One certainly does not sacrifice little girls to them. A sacrifice that will save millions, if not billions. Presuming the Americans even believe this fable exists. Presuming they think us monstrous enough to use it. They will. We will show them. A small taste. Just as they demonstrated their power in Hiroshima, we will- <coughs> I trust you will control yourself now? You cannot do this. The nightmares. I know you have had them, just as I have. The voices, screaming in the dark. That's what it wants Vaslov. That's what it is. You cannot make a deal with this thing, we have finally contained it, and now you want to offer it. Only if they force our hand. You can't. For the love of God. You can't. In log. Attachment 3, slash 3034 slash files slash audio underscore analysis dot log. Date, September 12th, 2012. From, Dr. Shulkyo. To, Dr. Emerson. Subject, Audio Analysis of SCP-3034. We've been listening to this signal for just over half a century now. During that time, we've recorded every instance of SCP-3034 since its discovery, except the very first one. Attached you'll find a mission report regarding details of this occurrence. That's over 600 recordings. We've explored every avenue of inquiry I can think of. We can't track the signal, and upper management, quite reasonably, doesn't want us trying to talk to it. That's why I'm contacting you. I'm hoping with in-depth vocal analysis, you'll be able to tell us more about the voice on this recording. Cross-reference it with recordings of other number stations maybe. Or give us a geographical location based on dialect and accent, an estimated age. Something. Anything. Otherwise, I'm out of ideas. All I know is that someone's broadcasting recordings of a little girl counting down to zero. And we're all too scared to find out what happens if we let her finish. I'm starting to wonder if this isn't some sort of elaborate prank. Date, September 15th, 2012. From, Dr. Emerson. To, Dr. Shulgo. Subject, Reply, Audio Analysis of SCP-3034. The broadcasts aren't recordings. 
Variations in tone, pitch, and phrasing make it clear that each instance of SCP-3034 is a new occurrence, each countdown is vocally unique. Either someone recorded this little girl counting down over and over again, hundreds of times, or she's been broadcasting these signals for over 50 years. There's more, we've analyzed the audio distortion in the background. It appears to be more voices, only slowed down. Just like SCP-3034-A, these are vocally unique for each occurrence. Regrettably, the distortion is far too weak for us to make out what they're saying. However, the length of the broadcast seems to correlate with the strength of the distortion, the longer the broadcast goes on, the louder the distortion becomes. Ironically, the problem is that we're too good at containment, Foundation personnel mobilize so quickly that no transmission we've recorded has lasted longer than 30 seconds. If we had longer transmissions, we might be able to extrapolate more data. My recommendation is that you allow the signal to go on for longer than 30 seconds. Maybe then we'll be able to determine precisely what it is. Date, September 16, 2012 From, Dr. Shulkill To, Dr. Emerson Subject, Reply, Audio Analysis of SCP-3034 Recommendation approved. Foundation personnel have been instructed to allow the next five iterations of SCP-3034 to continue until it reaches 50. Hopefully, this will provide enough useful data for us to analyze the distortion and figure out what the hell is going on. I'll send you the files once we have them. Date, January 19, 2013. From, Dr. Emerson. To, Dr. Shulgill. Subject. SCP-3034 I finished analyzing three of the five files you sent. It's just screaming. Thousands upon thousands of children, screaming. My previous recommendation is withdrawn. Inform your personnel to respond to any occurrence of SCP-3034 with the kill signal immediately. Date, January 19, 2013 From, Dr. Shulkyo To Dr. Emerson. Subject, Reply, Audio Analysis of SCP-3034. Agreed. Attachment 4, Slash 3034 Slash Incident Slash 201.log. Incident Report. Incident Number, 3034-201. Date of Occurrence, May 17, 2015. A Foundation researcher assigned to SCP-3034, Dr. Uriel Willis, misappropriated radio equipment to conduct an unofficial experiment. During an occurrence of SCP-3034, she attempted to establish communication with SCP-3034-A. SCP-3034-A ceased counting. Approximately five seconds later, an extremely powerful broadcast was detected. This signal consisted of a high-pitched screech which inflicted significant levels of pain, dizziness, and disorientation to all personnel present. The signal continued for a period of 25 seconds, at which point Dr. Willis used provisional Site 3034's radio equipment to transmit the appropriate phrase. The broadcast immediately ceased. Within the next 24 hours, researchers noted a significant increase in missing children cases across the world. In the majority of these cases, the disappearances occurred at a time roughly correlating with the 25-second broadcast. All cases believed to be associated with SCP-3034 have remained unsolved. Disciplinary action against Dr. Willis is still under review. Special containment procedures have been updated to reflect the importance of not interacting with SCP-3034-A outside of stated parameters. All tests regarding SCP-3034 are suspended until further notice. Attachment 5, slash 3034 slash incident slash 202.log Incident Report Incident Number, 3034-202 Date of Occurrence, June 4, 2015 An occurrence of SCP-3034 was detected. Personnel present responded with the appropriate transmission, leading to a cessation of SCP-3034. However, 
two distinct changes were noted. SCP-3034's audio distortion was significantly louder. SCP-3034A began at 199. 